Greetings, and welcome to Movie Recap Vault. In this session, we are going to review a 2023 drama and thriller movie, titled, Nowhere. In a dystopian future, Europe has declared requirements for how to handle dwindling basic resources. The not enough for all plan has been in effect for seven months in Spain. Spain's brutal government decided it can't care for citizens that were dependent on government assistance. Human smugglers try to help migrants quickly get to friendlier countries. Miko and his pregnant wife Mia desperately try to reach a ship that will take them away from Spain. Mia reluctantly offers her wedding ring for payment. First, they must get in a shipping container on a flatbed truck that they're told will be loaded onto a ship that will take them away. A migrant in the container is watching a news report on their tablet. The report describes how the elderly were killed first, and now pregnant women and children are targets. Mia uncovers her stomach and lets Miko know she's worried she hasn't felt the baby move in two days. She discovers a Snickers candy bar that Miko claims they'll save and eat it to celebrate when they arrive in Ireland. Later, Mia wakes when a light from a hole shines in her face. Miko wants to know how the baby is doing. He wants to call the baby Noah if it's a girl, and Mia wants to have a warrior boy. Mia becomes sad watching a child play with a rubber duck. She's reminded of their daughter that the soldiers took from them. Miko thinks their daughter was killed, but Mia doesn't want to believe that. Suddenly, the container shakes and the doors open. Many people rush inside. Mia is knocked to the floor, and Miko is pushed toward the doors. One smuggler fires a handgun in the air and shouts for the chaos to stop. He tells them that another truck is coming, and half of them must get out. Miko explains his wife is inside and he doesn't want to leave her. Miko is thrown outside, and the doors are closed with Mia inside. Mia sees Miko boarding a container marked 107 near her, and she calls him. Miko assures her that he'll be right behind her. As soon as they stop, they'll be reunited and get on the ship. They hang up to save their battery life. Mia sees the people trying to fill water jugs, fighting with soldiers. Women and children are beaten and loaded into cages. There's brutal chaos along the streets. Later, Mia sees that they've stopped near the cargo shipping docks. There are armed soldiers outside. Their driver is being asked for his cargo documents. Container 107 is seen arriving at the checkpoint. The people inside are terrified and hide behind a partition. The soldiers insist the container be opened. Their leader goes inside and thinks that there's a partition. He has a soldier fire through the side and confirms his suspicion. Mia hides on top of a crate. All people inside the partitioned hideaway are killed. The soldiers remove their bodies and most of their belongings, then depart. Mia is devastated and scared. She tells Nico to hide. The container she's in is marked nowhere on its side, and we see it being loaded onto the cargo ship. Mia finds a bag, left by one of the shop passengers, and checks the items inside it. She tries to get comfortable, and falls asleep. Suddenly, Mia wakes as the ship violently pitches and rolls. She hears the ship's crew members yelling, to secure the containers. Mia yells for them to help her, as she's, tossed around the container. Multiple containers are shown falling off of the ship in the rough seas. Mia appears to have been knocked unconscious. Later, Mia awakes. The container is floating in the ocean, and water has entered. She sees several containers floating nearby, but no ships or land. Mia panics and tries to call Miko. Her phone is damaged, and she can't get it to turn on. She doesn't know the password to be able to use the other passenger's phone. Her and her unborn baby are all alone. Mia checks the contents of the crates. She finds bags of hoodies, and puts one on. In the other crates, she finds many packages of earbuds and alcohol. She puts tape over a couple of holes where water is entering. She's comforted by the pictures in her photo album she found floating in the water. Mia hears voices, and then sees, container 107, sinking. That's the same container she thinks Nico is in. Mia panics and tries to get the other person's phone to work, using the SIM card from her phone. She hears Nico's voicemail message, as she watches the container sink. Mia cries as she keeps calling and listening to Nico's voice on his message. As night arrives, she then considers cutting her wrist to end the pain, when suddenly her unborn baby starts kicking. Mia feels better, and sleeps. Later, she hears wails and thinks the crate, now attached to the top of the container, is going to fall. She rushes out of the way as the crate falls and breaks open, showing the many rubber ducks inside. The water level quickly rises, and as Mia looks like she's going to drown, she wakes. It was a cruel nightmare. However, when awake, she realizes that the water has risen to about knee level. She opens the hanging crate and it's full of plastic containers. Re-energized, she uses the rubber liners from the plastic to partially fill the leaking holes. She uses a hose from the crate to drain water, and moves two of the crates to the least flooded side. The water levels on various days are marked with tape. 
She labels a piece of tape about at her eye level, as the maximum. She sits on the crates and tries to call Nico, but gets a no signal indication. She hangs pictures from her photo album. She assesses the items available for her use. Suddenly, Nico calls her. He tells her that the driver left him outside of the city, and it'll take time to meet with her. Mia explains how she's trapped in the container, floating at sea. Nico accepts the blame for her predicament and what happened to their daughter, Uma. Later, Mia hears thunder and sees lightning in the distance. Unfortunately, she also goes into labor. As she tries to keep out of the water in the storm, her phone falls into the water. She wades into the water to get her phone as the storm tosses her about, and realizes she's about to give birth. Removing her dress, she braces herself as the baby arrives. The umbilical cord is wrapped around the baby's neck, but she starts breathing and crying as soon as Mia removes it. Mia sleeps in a floating crate with her newborn baby. In the morning, she uses some of the hoodie sweatshirt material to make a bed and diapers for the baby. The baby won't drink Mia's milk and keeps crying. Mia snacks and drinks some of her limited water. Suddenly, Mia notices the drill and starts making holes in the top of the container. The baby continues to cry and doesn't appear to enjoy the sound of the drill. Later, Mia decides to try a different feeding technique. The baby finally begins to enjoy her mother's milk and stops crying. Mia is relieved, and the baby soon falls asleep. Mia finishes a quick snack and looks guilty when she realizes the baby is watching her. The next morning Mia continues drilling holes in the top of the container until the battery is exhausted. Later, she checks her phone and it still won't work. She loses her temper and throws items in the water. She then sees the pocket knife and gets the idea to use it to cut into the top of the container. Eventually, her hands are bloodied, and she stops. The heat and lack of food and water have taken a toll, and she is exhausted. She looks outside after hearing a noise, and a whale swims past and scares her. Mia continues, cutting in the morning of day 5 at sea. The knife's blade breaks before she can finish the job, but she's managed to cut three of the four sides of the rectangle. She's desperate for drinking water and resorts to licking the condensation from the container, but that quickly makes her sick. Mia is delirious and sitting in the water. Suddenly, a paper plane glides to her. She looks up and sees her daughter Uma, who the soldiers took away from her. Uma wants to know why her mother let the soldiers take her. Mia apologizes, and Uma walks away. Then, Nico appears. He comforts her and tells her it wasn't her fault. As the rain falls on Mia the next morning, she awakes. She gathers numerous plastic containers to capture the fresh water. As she handles a half-open sardine can, she gets an idea. She can pull on the portion she cut at the top of the container. Using the nylon straps that were holding the crates in place, she pulls on the metal and bends it downward to create an opening wide enough to get outside. Mia and the baby enjoy the cooler sea breeze outside. She notices small fish attracted to the soiled diaper she threw in the water, and gets another survival idea. She tries to catch fish by spearing them, but isn't successful, just exhausted. While resting, Mia sees an airplane overhead. She hurries to get something reflective from inside the container, but her thigh is severely slashed open as she tries to get back on top of the container. After the plane disappears, Mia searches for first aid tools. She tries to sanitize the cut and her throat with alcohol. Mia then strips the copper wire from the earbuds and uses the wire as sutures. She collapses when the job is finished. Mia recovers and is revitalized. She gets busy making a fishing net using the earbud wires. Finally, she catches a fish and eats it raw. The water level in the container on day 9 is near the maximum, and Mia starts a more sophisticated version of her bailing operation, again. Mia stores the caught fish in the plastic containers, and writes notes to be cast away hoping people will find them, and then her. She's able to bail more water out by day 12. One evening, Mia shows the baby pictures. She tells her that she was a school teacher, and her father, Nico, was a shopkeeper. She shows the baby a picture of her grandmother, Noah. Mia then decides to name the baby Noah, after her grandmother, and also in agreement with what Nico wanted. She shares the story of Uma, and how she wanted to be an airplane pilot. During the civil unrest, Uma wanted to go outside for five minutes to fly her paper airplane. Mia knew it was dangerous, but she let her, and blames herself after the soldiers took Uma away. Later that night, Mia realizes that Noah is cold. She makes a small fire in a thermos and Noah goes back to sleep. Then Mia realizes that the water level has suddenly risen to almost the top of the crate they rest on, and is near the maximum level. She hears something hitting the outside of the container, and takes Noah outside to investigate. Suddenly, Nico calls. 
He can't save Mia and Noah because he got shot by soldiers and is dying. He just wanted to hear Mia's voice one more time and say goodbye before he dies. Mia tells him that Noah was born, and Mia wants him to say something to his daughter, so she hears his voice. Miko calls Noah his princess, and tells her he squeezed her foot before she was born. They tell each other they love them, and then the phone battery dies, ending the call. Mia continues crying, alone with Noah at sea. Day 26 arrives, and the water level inside is above the top of the crates, and the maximum, Mia declared. They've been living on the top of the container since day 24. Mia made a raft for Noah, and is building a bigger one for herself. Mia notices a seagull eating a fish on top of the container and is happy that they must be near land. That night she hears scary metallic creaks that make her think the container is about to sink. She looks inside and decides to enter the container to retrieve a picture seen floating. She then sees the Snickers bar in a plastic container and swims to grab it. At that moment, the container starts sinking. Noah's raft floats off of the top of the container. Mia's leg gets caught in a bundle of nylon straps and she sinks below water. Mia manages to cut the strap and exit the sinking container. She swims to the surface as a whale passes below the water's surface. Mia is frantic and gasping for air when she reaches the surface. She keeps calling for Noah but can't see or hear her. A whale passes Mia and continues toward Noah. The whale releases air from its blowhole when passing Noah, and she cries from the water mist. Mia then hears her and swims toward her. The whale passes between them and Mia and Noah soon reunite. The next morning Mia puts fish in the water to attract seagulls and hopefully rescuers. It works. People on a small fishing boat rescue Noah and pull her raft aboard. They notice the line attached to the raft and pull Mia aboard. Mia is given CPR but it doesn't appear to revive her. After Noah cries, they give Mia more CPR and she returns to the living. Mia holds Noah and is overjoyed when she realizes that they have arrived off the shore of Ireland. They tried their best and succeeded. The end. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. Thanks.